Hey everybody, welcome back to Art of War, EU4, EU4 multiplayer featuring myself, the Articulate Northern Lion, as well as Roomba, <laughs> Mathis, and Quill. Say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hey there, how's it going? You, you asking me specifically, or oh, yeah. like as a group? Yeah, obviously. You specifically. How you doing? It's been pretty good, you know? <laughs> Hemorrhoids are flaring up, but apart from that, it's been a pretty good day. Oh, mm -hmm. we've all been there. Yeah, who hasn't Oops. been there? So, nope. can I take a moment to complain about something? Um, no, that's my job. Yeah, never yeah, stop the Roomba. <laughs> if we bring it up, they might add it to the game. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. It's always bothered me that disbanding an army doesn't return the man parity pool. And I wish they would do that. I can understand there's there's abilities to abuse it at war. Like, if you're about to get stomped somewhere, you can disband your army and to not lose war score. So, at war, it shouldn't return your manpower. But at peace, it should. That's a good point. Are you with me? Yeah, Victoria 2 does that, right? Your uh, troops yeah. go back to the soldier pool. Yeah, and that always made perfect sense to me. Yeah, it's so not like, they, here, just, like they don't just die. Yeah, like I'm above my force limit right now. Well, along so, those lines, ships should cost manpower. Not not a thousand, but like fifty. You gotta yeah, put, I agree. You gotta put people on a boat. It's probably, it's just so small that it's hardly worth it, but there should be, yeah, a token fifty or something. Yep, I'm just saying. I guess no. Is Northern Lion, you're not going to weigh in on that? You're not going to you're not going to add something well, to the Well, my my philosophy is that if you disband that army, a lot of the people in that army will have seen some shit and they're going to oh. want to get into a different line of work. So, <laughs> I think maybe it should it should roll like a dice with a weighted average based on the uh ferocity and length of the war, the atrocities that they've seen committed. And then, you know, a certain fraction of them go back into the military pool, but everyone who can get out does their best to do so. This is not a volunteer army. No, they there's don't only... acknowledge PTSD. This is like conscription, effectively. Oh, okay. I, I, You're I, an able-bodied thought... man from the age of 14 to 35 yeah. or whatever. And if you're a I Russian, age 10. Shit. Yeah, maybe. I, I wish there was a decision you could pass. Allow eight-year-olds to serve, double your manpower size. Well, that's lose ten discipline. <laughs> no, look at look at the <laughs> look at the idea group under the quantity idea group. It's called uh, the young can serve. Oh, it is there. Yeah, how old does a boy have to be before he's a man? <laughs> how old oh, must man. he be before he can die for his country? <laughs> ten, you know, ten, <laughs> ten's good. That's funny. I'm a grown man, but if I saw like we're in 1465. In Ethiopia, if I saw a 10-year-old coming at me with a spear or something, I'd be scared shitless. I've played enough horror games to know that kids are bad. <laughs> they didn't get you. You probably got the advantage, but, you know, they, they've got an edge psychologically, I think. How many, uh, so how many five-year-olds do you think you could take? A classic question. Uh, probably, like, at least 10. <laughs> The, you gotta think people like are divided. Um, Some people are like, oh, like three or four, and other people are like, I could take a hundred. Okay, that's ridiculous. Well, it depends. Do you get a weapon? Nope. You Everyone's are your ended. age and experience are the weapon <laughs> and your size. But you have to yeah. feel like if uh Okay, I've got if I, they didn't come at you all at once, the first few would just be cannon fodder, right? Like I could pretty easily pick up a five year old. I'm not saying I could throw them a hundred yards. But I could throw them down hard enough that I don't think they're getting back up. Sure. Yeah. See, so they, they're going to have to hit you with some simultaneity to get the numbers advantage. I got. I mean, I've got an eight-year-old, a four-year-old, and a, and a one-year-old. So I kind of know the span, the age span. And okay, the four-year-old, she is so she's useless. Like, in, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about like in a fight. Like, there's just no yeah. way a five-year-old. They're just useless. There's nothing they can do. You're saying I mean, if, if something goes me, down, she doesn't have your back. You know, let me just paint you a picture, okay? So every night when it's bedtime, if she says no, I just pick her up, throw over my shoulder, <laughs> just carry her upstairs and throw her in bed. And uh, she, uh, she, she's four. Can't do anything she, about that. You know, no, they can't stop you from putting them oh, in bed. Don't go into a bad place mentally here. Yeah, jeez. But yeah, so a five-year-old, I mean, you're asking like the... Uh, Thousand duck-sized horses or a duck size, whatever that yeah, thing that is. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, basically the same thing. It's a very strange topic of conversation. <laughs> it's good though. I'm it's, digging it. Yeah, there's not much going on right now with the game, is there? Nope. I'm trying to see. I found I found another Buddhist, so I'm gonna see if I can diplo vassalize someone. 
They were technically in a coalition against me until recently, but for some reason... Oh, apparently I eased tension. There must have been some event. Oh, come on. 162. So I can't even give them 25 gold. That'll take me to plus 188. Just like one shy or two shy of being able to vassalize them. Boo. How do you, okay, subsidize. Offer, offer military access. That'll work. Bam. Arumba, I don't worry, man. I solved it. I think you got really, this shit. Really, really worried. How old am I? <laughs> Thirteen. We're getting there. Now, if we're talking about how many thirteen-year-olds I could take, I'm I'm thinking like two. Yeah, there's a big range in what a thirteen-year-old can be. Yeah, I mean, my I, I, one scrappy thirteen-year-old could probably take me if they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My eight-year-old is about the same size as most fifth, most fifth or sixth graders. Like he's a he's a big kid. I thought you were gonna say most fifteen or sixteen-year-olds. <sighs> not that, no, like, not that much. Wow. No, we had a picture today, and he was they they had to line him up in the back row with all the fifth and sixth graders because he's too big for a second grader. He's wow. a big he's a big boy. Not fat. He's just big. You should get him involved in like basketball or something and. You know, it's a good investment. They can buy you a mansion in like 15 years. It's true. I was thinking about the big picture there. I hate the trade node setup around here. It's so stupid. Really, Vaginagar? You want to enter a coalition? All right. So. All right, I'll kill you. Did you guys notice that your discipline is a modifier on your military tactics now? No. I'm going like, to be honest with you. I did not notice that. Like, if you have... So, oh, more discipline, more military tactics. And I'm not sure if it's just a tooltip update or if that was a design change, because it, I don't remember ever seeing anywhere that, that it would actually affect your military tactics, because tactics reduces damage taken. That's all mm -hmm. that tactics does. Discipline used to just reduce um, the amount of damage, like, it would increase the amount of damage you do. But now, discipline affects both, but tactics affects... You see what it's kind of like multiplicative, like to, mm. Mm -hmm. it seems like discipline works twice, or maybe the, I, I just, it may just be a tooltip change. Maybe it was always in there. Yeah. <gasps> oh man, Ming falling apart. We got a dolly. We got a yi. We got a meow. A cat. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, like azure blue color. Still kind of jealous. I still don't like my green, but I have to say my elephant flag is kind of kick ass. <laughs> Some people in the comments were saying, like, oh, if I went down to, I don't know, remember, like, Malacca or something, maybe change culture or some damn thing, then it could form someone. And then someone else pointed out that I would lose my elephant flag, and that suddenly became unacceptable. <laughs> All right. When am I going to... I wish you would tell me what my birthday was. Oh, Regency ends. 4th of January, 1468. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. What's your flag, Mathis? Uh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's, it's kind of complicated looking. It's cool looking. I think in the very middle of the top, I think those are letters for like Allah or something. I yeah, can't remember. definitely letters in the language, but I don't know what it says. So There's a great website on the internet. I'm going to have to find it and put it in the description if I remember. That like ranks all the world's flags. And he's got like <laughs> all these crazy criteria. Like one of them is like, no letters on the flag. And another one is like, no colonial flags. Like, if you got a little Union Jack in the top left corner, you're automatically in the bottom of the pile. Okay. It just Fair goes enough. through all these things to try to find, like, the best ones. I, I believe Canada is relatively highly rated, which made me feel pretty good. I really like um, the Nepalese flag, the one that's like the two triangles instead yes. of the square or the rectangle. They really buck the trend. Yeah. <laughs> non I was going to say the, the only non-square. It's not a rectangular one. What's interesting about Switzerland is it's an actual square flag. Oh, like okay. Longer. I think I it's Switzerland. But yeah, Poland ball comics are always great when they include Nepal. <laughs> God, I love Poland ball comics so much. It's surprisingly funny online content for the most part. Mm -hmm. There was a Poland ball like Binding of Isaac just before Rebirth came out. It was like Poland was Isaac, and then the mother was the Soviet Union. Ah. 
Nice. And you can pretty much write it from there. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but it was relatively funny. I only have one country left in the coalition against me, which is not really a coalition. <clears throat> More of an ishin. Alition. <laughs> Alright, I gotta figure out the hell. I might actually be able to do like a a productive coalition war because there's two countries in the coalition against me and I want to attack them both. Hmm, that's convenient. You wanted to do what? There's a, I want to go to war with one country, but they're in a coalition against me with another country that I want to attack. So just attack either one. That's what I'm, I think I'm going to do. Yeah, coalitions are, are like very weak now. I have not encountered a situation where a coalition like actually made me give up provinces. Well, the fact that I got in that war with Diviet and then we truced out means that they left the coalition. They still hate me a lot, but yeah, they can't do anything. They'll join it like one month after the truce expires. So you still have, as soon as the truce expires, if you want to, you can declare war on them in that month, and they won't join the coalition. Mm. Whoa. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. There it is. Okay, Malwa. Malwa. You look like you're low on manpower, my friend. I still, still don't know how I really feel about this uh, colonization change with autonomy being at 50%. Malwa has 5,000 troops total with 300 manpower. Oh, man. Okay, that's bad. A, I'm sitting here with like 5,000 manpower being like, that's really low. The big teal blob. <laughs> well, I, was, I'm, I was prepping for Vagina Gar attack because they are, they went in a coalition against me and they have uh, a good chunk of the land that I want. But Malwa, I mean, hell, what am I going to say? No to that? <laughs> it's like free food. <laughs> <laughs> num num num. All right, I got about eight months before my regency ends. I'm prepped for multiple Scary. wars. Lose no. ten prestige, get eighty three dollars. Did we complain about that last week? Not do that. Mm -hmm. I remember someone was commenting saying, "Yes, yes, Aruma needs to complain about regencies because then it might get changed." About how you can't go to war when you're in regency council. Like you can do right. every other diplomatic action, anything else except declare war. So what, what what is it about the Regency Council that they're sitting down and they just say to themselves, yeah, well, we can't do that. You have to be 15 to legally declare war, man. It's like <laughs> you can't drive a car before you're 16. You, you can. can join peaceful <laughs> wars, but your council, your regent, doesn't trust you enough to be a mature adult. <laughs> but and they're the not... country doesn't like the idea of a council like deciding wars. I don't. Offensively, anyway. I it's just, kind of dumb. I just don't. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, uh, you randomly don't get to have fun for a decade. Yeah. yeah. Like, Play at okay. speed five. Like, in Victoria 2, there's no Regency Councils. In CK2, you have them, but you can still declare war, so... Uh, in Victoria 2, doesn't some of the government types make it harder to offensively declare? I'm trying to remember. I might be getting confused about a different game. I'm like, I may be thinking of, like, Civ 2, when you've got democracy. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, oh, the Senate says no. God damn it. I might be thinking of Civ 2. This happens to me a lot. <laughs> it's really bad. Playing actual Civ Five all the time, I'm like doing something. I'm like, wait, that was Civ Four. Never mind. It doesn't apply I, here. I played a lot of Civ Two. I like that game a lot, but I rarely get it confused in this day and age. I don't Have you seen I... that Reddit post of that guy who uh, has been playing the same game of Civ Two for like 13 years now? Yeah, I yep. saw that. That, was that awesome. one's really good. <laughs> they help them like cure. They're like, no, you're being stupid. You're doing this wrong. Here's what you do. And then he won. Can you imagine playing in the stalemate every day for like four years and then you post it online and somebody's like, just build nukes. <laughs> <laughs> it was more complex than that, but yeah. And it nukes in a different unit type, I think it was. Or you I think he had the wrong government too. Whoops. Like all Something of his engineers like were spending all of their time purifying the nuclear winter that always happened every turn or something like that. It was mm -hmm. repairing roads. I can't remember. Well, obviously he must have had nukes then. I, was... I'm, I'm paraphrasing what I remember about the situation. I'm pretty sure you're right about that, though. All right. Here's a the classic Northern Lion question. I declare war on country A. Country A is on, in a coalition against me with country B, but that's it. 
If I declare war on country A, country B comes in due to the coalition, do country B's allies get a defensive call? No. Okay. Look, no, look, check the box. You can't check the box. Look over the tooltip. Oh. If you hover over it, it'll it'll say specifically they will be called in as a co-belligerent, but they cannot call in their allies. Okay. So close to being done to declare war. So that's actually kind of an interesting thing. Like, you can't take 100% war score off of that secondary country because you can only negotiate with the war leader against a coalition, but they can't call in their allies and they are considered a co-belligerent, so you can take lots of land from anyone. Oh, they're considered co-belligerent? Yes. But they ah. can't, but they, that's the weird thing. They are, but they can't call in their allies. I have another oh, They question. really did nerf coalitions. Should I be breaking my alliances with vassals? Because I vassalized somebody and then immediately they broke their alliance with me just for fun, I guess. Are you, you're automatically allied, right? Or I yeah. guess you don't need an alliance because if I do anything, they'll come in? Yeah, there's no such thing as an allied state with a vassal. They're super allies. Okay, so they automatically... That wasn't just like... Yeah, you're fine. A bug. All right, got it. Cool, thank you. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> Oh, where'd Malwa well get 7,000 men? Okay. Country? So to answer the question that I had asked between videos, if you if you try to, to give everything to one of your vassals, you, you can't. Full annexation doesn't even show up as an option. And so, I kind of messed up. <laughs> well. You live and you learn, right? Oh, I didn't boost my maintenance in time. Derp, derp. So, if I were to declare war... <clears throat> no, Pegu would join in on the other side. And none of my allies would join in? Really? What dipshits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be too many. I really want to push for military tech 5 before I go to another war. Does anyone have score yet? Uh, yes. What? Yeah. <sighs> Jerk ass. I have 12 points. I have zero. I'm 95th with zero points. <laughs> I'm 24th with 12. How do you have... Oh, I, I, I guess you're a big Indian power. Okay. All right. I can go to war with Malwa now. Do I want to go to war with Malwa? Yeah, Vagina Gar. Well, see, here's my concern. If I go to war with Malwa, it won't be that difficult, but I'll be preoccupied and Vagina Gar might find that tempting. And uh, a two-front war might be too much to handle. Something um, somebody pointed out that I wasn't aware of is on the Outliner, there's now a new option for Rebel Factions, which is really convenient. Where is oh. that? You got enabled. It's the very bottom of the drop-down list. So you can actually oh, see is... quite useful. Oh, yeah. Nice. Done. Ooh, Military Tech 4. I'm a badass. <laughs> oh god. Welcome to the times, to. friend. I'm gonna fight Malaka. Oh no, I have three. Never mind. Wait, really? No. I have two. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong stat. I'm an idiot. I think I'll wait till I go military tech five, then I'll attack Malwa, because they're at four. If I can go in with one military tech above them. This is horseshit, should... man. Declare war immediately, like Ten days into the war, Yemen allies the person I declared on, <laughs> and I'm just looking at their screen here, like waiting for the, waiting for the fire to pop up. I don't think they're going to be able to do it though. All right, yeah, this is good. For people watching my screen, wondering what the heck I just did, I, I triggered that coalition war. Just for kicks. Oh, yeah, yeah I mean, ways to have fun. War. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> All right, how many troops does Yemen have? It's 10,000. Oh my god, I'm getting my ass kicked over here. What the hell's going on? Whew, that was close. If you refresh my memory, in enemy territory, you gain, is the correct answer, no morale 
or just diminished morale? Slower. Mm, it's okay. diminished. If you hover over the morale bar, it'll tell you the recovery rate. On the, like, select the unit, and then in the top left. Oh, hover. you know, that is the first time I've ever noticed that there's a morale bar there. Yeah, hover over that, it'll tell you the base is 15% per tick every month. And if okay. you're on controlled territory, you get a 5% bonus. You get a bonus for your army tradition, and then there's some ideas that can increase your recovery rate. Plus the 33% increase, or this, this is like an advisor that increases your morale recovery rate, I think. Okay. That might be the reinforcement guy I'm thinking of. But anyway, uh, the timer went off. I don't know if you hear it, heard it or not. Yeah, I heard yeah, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm allied in the war. I can walk through this, right? Yeah, good stuff. Siege all the things. All right, I'm good whenever. Uh, give me one second and I'll be good to go. Yeah, I can be good too. I just want to take care of these rebels that popped up. You're the best, Ryan. <laughs> ah, I have no manpower. Okay, uh, I'm good to go. Okay, me too. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future every single day. And check out multiple perspectives as we are strewn ac- across the uh, earth here. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon.